all about my money, get my guap and talk my uh, Higher than a bitch, I'm off the oil, they don't get it, uh Running up my money, I'm getting my money, I'm talking my chicken, huh that Bitch be talking that shit, but whole time told that bitch to listen, huh Running up this shit, but whole time ain't no competition, huh Oh, shit I'm gonna do the best of shit Cracking, y'all. I was buzzing, cousin. It's your boy, Mr. Sitchy, in the vet. You already know what I'm saying. We antsy chilling. You feel me? We already smoking and shit. You feel me? Got a uh, special situation today. You know what I'm saying? Doing something different, trying something different. You know what I'm saying? Finna interview Cuzzo. Ask him a few questions. You know what I'm saying? And see how this interview situation is and see how I do with the interviews. You know how I do with asking questions and stuff like that. Finna sip. We got some motherfucking. I got the dope. I gotta roll another one. You know what I'm saying? But. Oh, we put a vap. We put a vap. Put a vap out. You feel me? You can. What's with the lack of that? Dynamic, burn slow chimney, bazooka, dynamite sticks type situation. You good? Love, love, love. Hey, fucked up. I'm not smoking. Listen, <laughs> Eddie, now you're one of them now. Like, what you put in it? I gotta ask you what you put in it now. Cause boy, nigga, over dope niggas with the with the weed. My eyebrows, like I assume. You do you know what Mr. Curtis Jackson looks like? Bro, that nigga got buff ass eyebrows, bro. I assume his shit is heavy on his face. Nigga, after smoking that weed with PJ, bro, I was just walking around my nigga, it felt like I had motherfucking fingernail clippers. His eyebrows, my nigga, them bitches was just heavy as fuck, bro. I'm like, man, what the fuck you put in here? Moon rock. Motherfucking uh a, a syringe. Motherfucking I think you put Keith in there. Yeah, yeah. Keith too. He was, uh, you know. Do my fucking gloves be Bro, there. she has not moved. Smash. I gave her half of the bowl already, though. That's what I'm saying. Like, bitch, you're going to be sitting there. She's going <coughs> to come right over there and take a shit. Oh, God. Man, we go fab. You know what I'm saying? I'm smoking this bitch right now, but we're going to get this in. Y'all just want to do an intro and shit. You feel me? We ain't going to make it too long. You feel me? Make it original, raw. All of that uncut, you know, I don't really like cutting too much and I don't like cutting at all, you feel me? So, we finna answer, we catch these vibes and once we come up on here and we get on here, you feel me? We'll be back on here. What the fuck you talking about? Yes, sir, Ski. Shitty. Shitty, 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 shitty. I'm just kidding. No bullshit. I was cracking y'all, I was cracking y'all, I was cracking y'all. your boy Mr. Sitchy up in here, you know what the fuck going on, you feel me? With my cousin, you feel me? We finna instigate this interview buzzing, you feel me? I'm gonna let him introduce himself, so I ain't gotta do none of that, you know? I let people tell y'all what they wanna tell y'all about themselves and let you know whatever they want y'all to know about themselves. So you feel me? Cause I was gonna introduce yourself. What's going on, y'all? Mr. MRG, aka Queasy, OG Queasy. You know, just another day, I'm an iron worker for one. Proud worker at Northern Iron and Tool, you know what I'm saying? I'm just average, yo. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I consider myself average, yo. You know what I'm saying? A stand-up individual. I support my cousin and everything he doing, you know what I'm saying? Because he's standing on business 24-7. I noticed that that phrase is trending right now. He does that on the norm. You know what I'm saying? Stand on business. Stand on business. Stand on business. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh... I am a child of six. I have five other siblings. I'm the sixth child. Well, I'm not the sixth child, but you know what I'm saying? My mother had six kids. Uh, what else can I say? So, y'all figured out in this interview. So, you because I got some pictures. You feel me? He's going to tell y'all about himself with these questions. You feel me? But just Sersky, man. So, this is my first interview I done ever did. It's going to be the first I done ever done. And I ain't really, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I feel like I'm gonna be comfortable with the shit because doing the podcast and the whole situation, I'm used to asking people questions and shit like that, you know what I'm saying, but I never did like an actual uh, interview or whatever. Well, I guess you, said, you can say I have, I'm lying, I'm used to this shit actually. So, 
I wrote my questions and shit, you know what I'm saying? Because we don't want to improv. I'm cool with the improv, but I ain't want to improv. I want to make it natural. You feel me? Make this all authentically done. You feel me? So we're going to situate this like this. You feel me? So, because I got six questions for you. Okay. Answer them however comfortably you feel. You know what I'm saying? I don't care how long you fucking talk. Don't talk too long, though. But you feel me? You know how that shit goes. You feel me? Do what you do. You feel me? Be comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Explain. And just be you on this motherfucking no bullshit. Yeah. So, first question, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, tell the people who you are and where you from and what you do. You already did that, you know? So I ain't even got to ask that question, you feel me? He just told y'all where he's from, what he do, my cousins, I ain't work, you know what I'm saying? Nigga don't know you've been doing it for about three years now. The nigga keep uh, basically downplaying himself a year and shit. I don't know how the fuck, I, shit. When you naturally do some shit, like, nigga, you don't know. <laughs> like, if motherfucker, how long you been doing music? The only reason I know it's been a long time is because it's been a long time. Uh, Let's see, but all right, cuz. So, tell the people where you were born and raised. I was born in Cook County Hospital. But my mother brought me here when I was probably like four years old. So, I don't really know anything about where I was born. But I was raised in North Minneapolis. Lived there for like Head Start. I lived in the Cecil Newman Projects. You know what I'm saying? Then we moved from there to Riverside Plaza over south, Little Mogadishu. You know what I'm saying? And then after that, we moved to St. Paul when I was like, dang, how old was I when we moved to St. Paul? I went to middle school in St. Paul. So, so, well, actually, not even, okay, before, let me back up. Grade school in St. Paul, I went to Ames Elementary. From there, I went to Galtier Magnet, R.P. Dakota. And then from Galtier Magnet, I went to Hazel Park Middle School. Probably the best years of my life. I love all my Hazel Park soldiers. And then Central high school god i hated that school so yeah so basically i'm an east side native though after moving from minneapolis to the south side to st paul like i was raised here I, everything i know is basically from the east side oh yeah. bro no bullshit man i go for a lot of this no cap all right so you kind of somewhat answered this but not like super fully. How long have you been in Minnesota? Let's just say my whole life. Like I, I don't. I went back home, and it, I can honestly say it was a culture shock. Like, like mom, get me from over here. Like I, it, Chicago's different. Like, shout out to being conceived there, <coughs> cause like, what my mother told me is like Cook County Hospital didn't do circumcisions. You feel me? So I'm 100% me. Motherfucker didn't cut nothing off of me or nothing. You feel me? So, like, I'm I'm grateful that I was born in Chicago. But, like, if I was raised in the teens, like, I, I know for a fact I wouldn't have made it. Like, I'm so happy my mother moved me to Minnesota. I love Minnesota. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Finest of herbal essences. Y'all seen the herbal essence? Thank you. Very fun. Like the commercials, the old herbal essences shampoo commercials. When you smoke this shit, it feel like a motherfucker in your hair. Like, oh, uh, yeah, shit's smoking. I'm all the fucking talking about that. It's smoking. Let me tell you, like a five different things. Just smoking. No cap. So that was because I was telling you how long you've been in Minnesota. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, been a damn near his whole life. You feel me? I basically watched, oh dang, I forgot. Okay, let's rewind to the north side. I went to Willard Elementary. Yeah. I never home, of, home, home of the, 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 the creator of Scarface. You know what I'm saying? R.P. Marker. <coughs> I heard he's gone. I hope it's not true, but that's what I heard. If it's true, R.P. Him. Had a Scarface and shit. Willard's the shit. It's a, it, I guess it's a police academy now. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. That's why I never heard of that. Yeah, Willard was the truth, bro. <laughs> that was, that was a decent, that was a decent motherfucking school. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. But yeah, so 
I that's this is where I was raised. I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a East Side native. I'm a, like basically at 35, I'm an East Side OG. Oh, bro, what is it like growing up in the Twin Cities? Cause I'm man, no Minneapolis and St. Paul. Minneapolis, man. I lived on 26 and Morgan. I lived on Ninth and Oliver. I lived on Dupont. Like it, the North Side was me growing up on the North Side. That shit was that shit was different. Every day, and I'm talking about. It's funny how I grew up and become a grown man, and you hear certain phrases that our people have made, like jump off the porch. Like people, I got horrible feet. Like I, I was running the north side with no shoes on, with no regard or nothing. I'm out here. I'm at Big Stop. Fuck are you talking about? Like if you really a north sider, you really know about motherfucking Big Stop. You feel me? Like shit, crack the shit, crack the shit, crazy though. Like. I love Northside, like, at that time, I can say that. Don't get me confused. When I was a child, I loved the Northside. That shit ain't shit now. I'm not fucking, you feel me? Like, we had a five-bedroom house, two two bathrooms, full basement. Like, I can still remember the name of the paint in my mom's kitchen. It was called Tiger Eye. That shit was hard. Like, on the Northside, nigga... As far as I was concerned, nigga, we was rich. The fuck is you talking about? <laughs> like, dead ass. Like, I had everything. My mom made sure I had everything. Everybody respected my mother. There was not a, there was not a person on the north side that would have crossed my mom. Or everything. Yes. And when they did, that shit was... Blah. <laughs> Bad news bears. <laughs> have a drink with me, cousin. No, I'm finna take that. I see that motherfucking nice ass. Sixty-seven. Uh, ooh, level. Like man, time's wrong. Feel That shit crazy, motherfucker. that came a long way. Motherfucker got four hundred one k. It's crazy. It's like going up in Twin City. I mean, not in Twin City, St. Paul. St. Paul. Well, now St. Paul. St. Paul. Man, my stomping grounds. I'm gonna say the old Pauliana. Now my stomping grounds. I t I love St. Paul so much it doesn't even make sense, man. Like the north side and the south side as a child, you just growing up, figuring out who you is and shit like that. The east side of St. Paul, man. I'm talking about. I've had so much, so many different experiences. It's, it's I just have a lot of good memories. That's why it be kind of blowing me when everybody I hate. East side and I want to move to Texas and I want to get out of here. I like okay, I understand you getting out of here, but like don't downplay where we at. You know you love it here. I love St. Paul. I've lived everywhere in St. Paul. I lived on Payne and Bush. I've lived on Payne and motherfucking Lawson. I've lived on motherfucking Jessamire. I've lived on motherfucking Geranium. I've lived on Cook. I've lived on Wells. I'm a real East Side vet. Like, I love it, bro. Like, for real, for real. What was going on on the East Side? Shit. You and your tabs. What was busting? What was cracking? What was the activities? What was the fun? What was the what was the bullshit? Me at 16, I was in Louis Bar drinking. It's no longer there. I was in Louis Bar drinking like I was 35 years old. <coughs> Every day. I'm in that bitch. It cost me a twenty dollars to get in this bitch. Boom, I'm in that bitch. The East Side Pub is no longer there. Legendary. I'm in that bitch. It's a two sided bar. It's the only two sided bar I've ever seen. And I'm thirty five years old. And that bitch is bussing. Like you talking about it. what Payne Avenue the strip? What do you mean? The vein of the motherfucking twelve? Lay mat man, these St. Paul police is bitches. Man From night moves, Harding area. To motherfucking Eastview Recreation Center, to motherfucking Cherry Pit, like it's it's the 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 East Side is really. If you look, if you constantly look at the bad, you ain't gonna like it. But if you look at the good, that shit is fifty fifty. Like it was cool growing up on the East Side for the simple fact that my mom was already well respected because she came from the North Side already. <clears throat> my my motherfucking OG. She'll be 74 this year. I'm so happy she'll finally be GD because she's naturally a Blackstone <coughs> Ranger. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She done made it to 
74 years old. I watched my mom. I was just telling my cousin. I, I watched his auntie die. Actually die before me. Because her, her tricuspid valve failed. And I was. Where did we live? That's when I was in 6th or 7th grade. So this is 2000 or 2001. I'm attending Hazel Park Academy. That's. A uniform school. I had to walk to school. That's what it was like on the east side. I, yep. I didn't. I didn't live far enough from the school to get a bus, so I had to walk to school every morning. Yep. Me and my best friend uh, Michael Anchor. I had to. We used to test each other and see who could run and at a steady pace to school every morning type shit. But yeah, man, keep me on track, cause I'm hot. <laughs> oh yeah, the, the yeah, growing up on the yeah, east side, the what it was like. Yeah, yeah. what's the fun? Yeah, it was like, like shit. Oh, let, let me get started on this motherfucking roller skating shit, man. E motherfucking Saints North vet every Saturday night is going down. Mm -hmm. It's funny we grown now and we see ATL how they was at Cascade on the east side in St. Paul, Minnesota, Saints North. If you wasn't there on a Saturday night, you was lame as fuck. You're, you you're right. downright lame. No one knows you. <laughs> you're not relevant. Fuck, you talking about the buses? I'm talking about you be seeing shorts of people getting into it on the buses and shit. That, ooh, hold on. This shit crazy. Our bus that we took from the east side to get to Saints North is changed so many times. Motherfuckers gonna get on my ass if I can't remember the original number. That's crazy. It's the 74 now. Damn, what was it? I should take the 74 to 80. Right, that's your time. I'm talking about when <coughs> I was in sixth grade, nigga. It wasn't the 74, bro. <coughs> you feel me? The 80, the 80 was a different number, too, because that's the one that comes from Sunray directly there. Them were, they changed them numbers, but nigga. Both of them bitches have changed. If I'm not mistaken, it's okay. Whoever sees this, you can cuss me out. Oh, do I want to say the fort The 14th? Oh, I, I ain't gonna lie. I can't remember. That was a long time ago. That was a long time ago, but... Growing up on the east side was a, a was a, a real treasure, man. Like I got a Sony nineteen. He 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 didn't know what it was like growing up on the east side. He was a baby, so his my his version of my version of the north side and the south side is the east side. He's a Maple Grove kid, so you know what I'm saying. Like he don't understand. Like the east side was lit on everything I love. I'm about to do this. Some motherfuckers up, man. I know, cause nigga, I grew up over this city. So a lot of the shit you saying was still taking place when I grew up over these. You feel me? Night moves are still busting out. Right, that's why I went to night moves. They spent it was like three night night moves taking place at one out Washington, I think Central, and then one out uh Harden. But I always went to the Harden one. Me and Jay Down Nash went to that one every fucking mm -hmm. summer. Right. Going crazy in that bitch. Well, actually, I ain't going to lie. I was weak as hell, but... You know what I'm saying, motherfuckers? It ain't so going crazy doing what they like, do. Like, at that time... At that time, in the Hazel days, like... The East Side Third Block shit wasn't even structured yet, bro. It's TMT. The LTG, like... The motherfuckers was Lower Town Gangsters and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was totally different from my mama. Then motherfuckers grew up, and then motherfuckers start... Just operating different, you know what I'm saying? Like started standing for different you know, shit, so they started like, going by different It was shit. so, it was so, it was just, it just seemed like it was so much love on the East Side when we was kids, bro. Like, I mean, we was doing our thing at the same time, but like now and eight years ago, thirteen years ago, type shit, bro. Like, it's just totally different, bro. Motherfuckers is really. Like you said, standing for different shit. Like, we all used to stand for the same shit. Now, it's like, motherfuckers grown, they have kids. Motherfuckers stand for different shit. Like, nigga, I thought I knew you. <laughs> I thought I knew you, but nah, like, shit crazy. Yeah, yeah bro. It'd be different as hell, man. Now, <clears throat> cuz on. That's so you feel me. You know, you did some time. You know what I'm saying? Like a motherfucking champ, you know what I'm saying? Got out. 
took your uh, your parole to the chain. You feel me? Succeeded. You feel me? Completed your shit. You know what I'm saying? Rolled through your shit. You know what I'm saying? So, with all of that being, since you didn't got out, bro, how hard or easy has it been making an honest living as a felon? I could tell you, cause it that is a very good question for your first interview, and I'm very proud to like partake in your first interview, cause it's some good shit. Like, now y'all, my people, my people, just hear me out. It was easy as fuck, easy, and y'all ain't probably gonna like to hear this. It's because of one man, Donald Trump, man. Donald Trump hates Mexicans so much. He made it so easy for a black man to get a job. It was fucking ridiculous. That's why when I sit around and I see my people and niggas don't have jobs, it's hilarious to me. I've been working on and off with Northern Iron. This, It's a union job. I have a 401k. There's good people there. Like, for real. Like, work that people do not want to do. Like, this is clean as my hands get type shit. I work damn near seven days a week. I work until they tell me I don't work type shit. Like, dead ass. Easy. A cakewalk. <laughs> what? As I... It, Man, that was a good question. I'm talking about easier than a motherfucker, man. On the weekends, I make $32 and like 83 cents or some shit an hour. Like, I I live in that motherfucker, man. Like, straight up, it's easy. <laughs> that shit is easy. And then what's really good is like, he's gonna fuck around and be president again. Like, yeah. He's retarded. He's mentally retarded, man. He's a Gemini. <laughs> but listen, he's the funniest president we've ever had on the... Ever. He's the funniest. The coolest president we've ever had in my time was Bill Clinton. This nigga smoked weed and played the saxophone. Fuck is y'all talking about? Like, yeah, like, what? When he gets back in office, ev what? Gas prices are going to go down? <laughs> what? fuck is you talking about? Man, our president doesn't even know whose hand to shake. <laughs> like, that no, ass. Bro, like, wait till he hurt. get back in that bitch, bro. He gonna build a wall that is big as shit. What y'all gotta worry about is when Bill Clinton gets rid of all the Mexicans that he can, he feels satisfied. That's when niggas have to start, like, oh, shit. Like, we next up type shit. But it, that, to answer your question... Easy as hell, bro. You talking about Joe Biden? Or you talking about fucking, uh... Joe Biden is the nigga, our president now. Like, he said, doesn't you know what... You said Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton was our coolest president. He said, well, you gotta worry about getting rid of the Mexicans. Yeah. That, that's Bush. <laughs> I mean, not Bush. I'm sorry. <laughs> Motherfucking... <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm sorry. This moonshine is a motherfucker. I'm sorry. Trump. Trump. <laughs> Trump. Good, Trump. Uh, Trump. Content, Trump. Trump, he just hates Mexicans with a passion. Hey, we love Mexicans, bro, so don't... I mean. love him. I, my, I, Miguel Aranda, holla, hey, free <laughs> Chad Aranda. That's my, 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 you know my mother love you. you fuck you talking mm -hmm. about, like, yeah, I love Mexicans. Fuck you talking about. Sure but, like, he, 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 he hates them to the point where, like, we're cool. We, us niggas are cool now. And you gotta think about it, man. We got niggas that love Trump. There's footage of Kodak Black saying he'll give Trump a million dollars right now if he asks for it because he's a Gemini. Both of them are Geminis. He says, I'm, yes, homie. I'm fucking with him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have some champagne. <laughs> Put some up. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking with him. Look, that's what I'm saying. So we're already linked in with Trump. Like, as yeah, soon as he yeah, gets man. back in his house, AKA the White House, mock my words. Gas prices are gonna drop. Y'all president right now sold half y'all. Man, bro, Joe Biden sold half our well, you reserve, reserve <laughs> to China. Why would you send why would you sell half of our oil reserve to China? That means if we had to fund a war, aka 
gas our, 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 our battleships, our tanks work off of jet fuel now. Like, why would you give half of our shit away? Y'all wonder why we got high gas prices? That's because we don't have any fucking gas. You know how long it takes gas to be refined? Oil to be refined into gas? To be yeah, like, you know, and preserved. That's a whole nother fucking thing. He got, you know, he got it. That shit crazy as hell. But to answer your question, that's what, man, it was uh, heaven living on the east side. I love the east side. Shout out to motherfucking Lil Oven, man. What was y'all talking about? Lil <laughs> Oven. Shit. Man, shout <laughs> out to Big Steer Meats. What was y'all talking about? If you need your shit sliced thin, what was you talking about with my mom? Jeez, so to answer the, to answer the question, it was it, as a felon, it was simple. That nigga, it, it was easy. <laughs> it was easy now because oh, hold on, and then let me all bullshit aside and drinking aside and shit. Trump being in the office and COVID striking at the same time as being released. What they were they were letting nigga they're letting niggas out because of COVID, and he was the president at the time. Like it was too eat. Too sweet. My tooth hurts. Fuck like, you talking about everything I love. Like, yeah. No bullshit, bro. Easy. That's why, man, there's so many people that just aren't like, what? No effort, man. How the fuck are you not giving effort when there's a white man in office that has so much hate? And we know about white hate. We know about it. You know what I'm saying? He hates Mexicans so much, he gave us a leg in. And y'all ain't taking advantage of it? That's crazy as hell. He'll give you a job quicker than a motherfucker. If anybody needs a job, look up Polar Plastic. Go work that 12 hours. You'll get some paper on my mama. If you don't get no money, none at all, go go start at Polar Plastic. You'll get you some money on my mama. 12-hour shifts. All you doing is putting plastic in bags. Yeah. For 12 straight hours, you're just putting plastic in bags. If you can't put plastic in bags, there's something going on. All you want to do is beg? Yeah. And that's probably why niggas <laughs> don't be working, nigga, because I know a lot of niggas just think like me fast and sell. He just said, if you can't, and I'm sitting here like, if you can't. Why the fuck would I say that put plastic in bags? I, I, my head just lit. That was the first thing I literally thought. Like, now let me get down. Let me break do it down. Let me break it down. Look, he said not right now. I'm willing to do it. It sounds good to me, and I'm gonna explain to y'all why. Let's break it down. When I was in prison, I was getting twenty five cents an hour. Yeah, that makes and sense. And then, when I got happy and I was in minimum security, I'm chopping down all of the trees and shoveling all of the snow in Owatonna. For thirty five cents. So you're welcome, Owatonna. If you didn't slip, you're welcome. I salted that shit. You're welcome. You feel me? Getting out and getting $14 an hour for 12 hours? What? All I gotta do is put motherfucking plastic in bags out and lost y'all motherfucking mind. I'm on that. Fuck you talking about? You feel me? And before that, let's break it down even more. When you are in prison, you're either doing license plates or you're folding bags. I mean, you're folding balloons. Balloon those limits. balloons, those balloons that y'all buy from Party City, yeah. That's crazy. Your you uncle that, that you keep sending money to in, in the joint, yeah, he's been folding those bags nice and tidy. So when your son or daughter has a birthday, they did open a present for real. Dead ass. Because we packaged all of that shit, every last bit of it, for 25 cents an hour. And if you've been doing it long enough and, and, and you're good and they like you, you get 50 cents. Damn, that boy you feel me? That nice. Owatonna, the Owatonna tree cutting and shovel remover, I was getting paid $2. That shit was luck. Oh, what? Luck too? What? I don't get 50. It made you look at people different when you got back to the joint. Because I get to go outside in a van and look at people and shit. So we got motherfuckers looking at people different when you get back to the joint. I get two dollars, my nigga. I don't know nothing about no twenty-five cents. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah all right. About? So yeah, nigga making eight times as much. Experience. And then as soon as you get out, they give you. The, it was so many. They point you to the jobs though. That's why it was easy. You're like, huh? What? People are coming back to the halfway house. I've been grinding metal all day. 
They're giving me tw They're giving you who? They're giving you what? Say what now? Oh yeah. Can you write those credentials down for me? Because I want to go there and just do a walkthrough so I can see what's going on. Yeah. It's real dirty in here. I'm not ready for this. Feel me? Let me start with the bags and the plastic first. Feel me? And then now that I remember, you can work at the slaughterhouse. Oh, yeah, my dad did that shit. Well, that shit. He got then kicked you by can't, a cow in his hand. I'm well, talking about that shit, shit is if you <laughs> listen. You're smelling like death itself when you come home. I'm talking about foul, foul. You've been killing cows, hitting their ass in the, the center of their head. <laughs> and now that his big ass that fell over, you gotta, you gotta get him up. You know what I'm saying? This is a yeah, cow. Remember, try. cows have three stomachs, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember. I th they have more than one stomach. So, you know okay. what I'm saying? Like, no cage, like shit, four, crazy. Eight, some, eight. some weird shit. I know they taste good. That's all I know. And they're heavy. You feel me? And dumb. They, they, if you put them in front of snow, they won't they won't eat it. So they'll, they'll die of thirsty. thirsty. Shit's weird. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how you know that we're not supposed to be eating it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> My bad, I'm getting off the topic. My my bad, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Hey, what the fuck? That shit fucking hell. It is what it is. I like Wagyu steak. Um, it's been massaged the entire John from my mom. Massaged fucking cows. I ain't gonna lie, like I couldn't do that. You feel me? <laughs> Niggas is massaging. No, no, for the for, for like the mental That's thing probably though. How my like, dad probably got kicked about, for real. I mean, got the massage cow probably seen, before they slaughtered that bitch, bro. Did you ever get the got Charlotte Webb in school? With the spider and the pig and shit? <clears throat> Nigga, you didn't massage this pig, man. You got a whole relationship with this one. You know what I'm talking about? And now, they're about to kill it. You've been massaging this motherfucking hand, feeding this motherfucker in a small kennel. As big as my cat's kennel. That They don't get any bigger than that. Because that's the tenderest meat. When they're that, you feel me? Get their ass about this big. About like, you know what I'm saying? Nice little plumpness, but no real, no... Art. A big ass pig with everybody's used to, you feel me? That shit's expensive as hell and it's good. Fuck are you talking about? And, and I wanna say this. Can we all can y'all stop throwing all this bad stigma on pork, man? Seriously, bro. Like pork saves people's lives. Mm -hmm. Y'all keep talking about it's bad. Black people found religion, aka you became a Muslim all of a sudden and now you wanna not eat pork. Well, if there was no pig, my mother wouldn't even be alive, fam. That tricuspid valve I told you all about earlier, she got it replaced, and it came from a pig. So, like, if a pig can save lives, why the fuck does it have so much bad stigma? You can, you can, yeah, you, yep. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> this shit is crazy. Man, people save lives too, yeah. The person, people figured out that if they go inside the pig and get their heart valve, it can save lives. We should be praising pigs instead of talking about that. I understand they don't sweat and they eat their own shit and shit, you know, and they real nasty and shit, but look. Have you tasted pork? Why is it the, 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 the pig is one of the most filthiest animals I know? Why does it taste so good? You save pork. lives, <laughs> eat, eat your own no shit. Game. Right, I don't even eat pork chops no more, but I eat chitlins. I, yeah, I know how far-fetched that is. I was named after a slave. I'm, I'm a real nigga. I've never, you feel me? I'm eating what I'm eating. You feel me? I, I do not eat pork chops. Because I, was, the reason I said I don't eat pork chops, I'm kind of semi-capping, is because I ate a pork chop maybe a year ago for the first time that my mother cooked me. She's the only person that cooked me pork chops. And I did not, I, I, it did not sit well with me. I was just like, mm -mm. Like for the first time in my life, I was like, yeah, I don't like, cause I hate lamb. Everybody frowns, I hate lamb. And that's kind of contradicting because I say it's super gamey, but I love venison. That's deer. That shit's ultra gamey, but I like it though. I don't, I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> that shit, nigga, venison steak, don't let nobody Veer you from it until you try it, nigga. Shit. Fire, my nigga. I ain't tripping. No bullshit. My cousin has been expanding his palate. I just ate some fire at lamb chops. My cousin been expanding his palate, you feel me? Sushi, you know what I'm saying? All type of exotic shit, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Like I told him, the only thing that we're not trying 
the only thing we're not doing without trying, because I'm a firm believer in, nigga, you can't, you ain't never even tried it. So how the fuck is you gonna say you, you don't like it? We're not trying homosexual sex. We're just not, <laughs> doing, we're not doing it. We don't need to, we don't need to try it to see if we like it. You feel me? We don't need to try that. That's the only John, you feel me? We don't need to try that shit. So don't ask us. Fuck is you talking about? You feel me though? I was thinking about it like drunk as hell one night. You hear me, cuz? I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it though, cuz. Like, that is. Like, nigga. God damn. I'm a fifth degree black belt and delete and believe it, nigga. You can't knock it until you try it. You feel me? But I know one thing that we gonna knock on with a big ass door knocker, nigga. Homosexual sex. I'm not doing none of that. Hey, bro. Fucking. Crying, you feel me? What the fuck? He knew he was going to get a little bit of the... Yeah, you feel no. me? A little bit of the comedian in me. Yeah. That's why we got to drink whenever we do. And then that's... A, yeah, man. Shout out to Drink Champs. Y'all got the right idea? No, All the no. interviews, motherfuckers going to be sipping on something. They better bring something. What are you talking about? Oh, God. Oh, shit. You got another question for yep. me, cousin? I got, I got one more question for you, cuz. What's some advice you will give to the people and the children just... Rather it's some life advice, motherfucking it's some getting old advice. Rather it's some shit you would tell them not to do when you're young, cause it'll fuck you up when you're older. And it ain't even gotta just be less. It could be shit like when you say how like you fucked up your collarbone and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know shit where it's like yeah. anything. Like, hey man, look, you feel me? Don't let a motherfucker slip your disc and shit when you're fucking yeah, 15, yeah. cause you won't grow up and be 35 and then you yeah. gonna walk funny. Yeah. Shit like it could be this whatever. Is, this is the, well, we'll start off with the kids. If you are. Let's start off with the, the yeah, I want to start at my favorite number because I feel like I start being aware of a lot of shit on my golden birthday because, or around, well, the year of my golden birthday around that. I ain't getting no gift or nothing because I stole some Pokemon cards from the, the, the Target on Lake Street, so I ain't getting no, I ain't getting no, no, no gifts. But what I do remember is I start smoking weed that year. Bro. You know what I'm saying? This is my advice. Anything that anybody gives you free and currency, save. You did not work for it. You did not work a second for it. If somebody gives you $5, do not spend it. Put it up. $5. You can't fuck with that money for five years. Them five measly ass dollars. You don't be concerned about looking, looking at that money to spend it in any type of fashion. Any money that you can save as a child, save it. Because there's stuff that you're gonna want. Materialistic things don't really matter, but in this society, you're only human, you're gonna want some materialistic things for yourself. And if you start saving when you're a child, AKA scamming your parents, scamming all adults. Hey, my tooth, my little sister had the right idea. That's why she's a lawyer now. Oh, I have a tooth. Here's the Eminem mini jar. Yeah, the tooth is right here. Give me five dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My little sister bought a bike or some shit or something with all that money. I was jealous as hell. Nobody's giving me any money. My tooth fell out. So, like I said, save every last penny so you can do so you can get that car that you want when you turn sixteen. So you don't have to ask your parents. So you have some type of knowledge of saving. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like money, <clears throat> I don't want to make it seem like money is everything, but my advice to the children, you don't know anything about money because you're a child and you can get it because you have adults around you that are willing to give it and they work hard for it. So take advantage of that and save it. Don't show it. I, I understand you're going to come up in a time where you're seeing people show a lot of money and all that other type of shit. Don't show it. Surprise everybody when you turn 25. Fuck. All of a sudden, you have a Jaguar. You're like, does. what the fuck is going on? You want to fuck people up. You don't want to be a part of what the fuck this society got going on. Like, straight up. That's my advice for the for the kids. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And then my advice for uh, adults, like, <laughs> I don't even know, man. Like, Today's society is just social media got people's minds so fucked up. It it's hard to to tell you what's going on. 
I'll give you any advice. We live in a society now that where women don't need a man. They can do everything by themselves. They don't need a man. So they think. So they think. Yeah, so they think. But they, I'm just saying what, yeah, so, so they think. But this is what they're saying. You feel me? It, it's crazy because, like, you know, when they say women are from Venus and men are from Mars or however that goes, Literally it's a fact Venus. because you... They're from Pluto because Pluto don't even exist. Exactly. I mean, it exists, but it was really an ice ball. It's not really a planet. You cold-hearted fuckers. That's where you are from because the shit that you're talking about doesn't even make sense. The telescope that we, we used when we discovered that ice was foggy as hell. That's why we thought it was a planet. But anyway, we live in a, a society where women can do it by themselves. They don't need men. Even, and that goes back to me saying, bringing up the whole Venus women from Mars, I mean, men from Mars and women from Venus, because they live on a different planet. You don't need men for anything, but like, other than the super butch bitch that's from Dow's house that has the hard hat on, like, how many do y'all really think there are of them? Okay, they're, they're, they're 100,000? What is a hundred thousand butch bitches? That's not enough. It's not as hard as when, yeah. when, when, when they say they don't need men, I don't see anybody coming to the house and changing your water heater that is a woman. I, I just don't see it. So, like, women live in a constant fantasy to me. This is my opinion. And I'm a man, so my whole goal is to be financially stable and my foundation be stable enough to for me to pay for everything. Mm-hmm. Like women, women yell, "I need a nigga to pay for everything." And that, that. like, yeah, that's true. That's where we naturally wanna be. That's where we want it. We want to do that for you, but you're not showing us anything for us to even want to do that for you. So, like, with that type of shit going on, I don't even know what to tell motherfuckers, bro. Cause women love scammers. You know what I'm saying? They love dope boys. You feel me? As soon as you start talking about a motherfucker that gives seven days out of their life to bring in income to possibly buy you a Teflon purse or some Uggs or $300 on your hair or your feet or whatever you like. You feel me? Because us as men, we want to please our women, but I just don't see a lot of women pouring into their men these days. So I, I, I... I honestly don't have any advice, really, to tell my father. I'm 35 years old. I would love to have some honest, honest advice for y'all, but I I don't know because <laughs> I don't know what's working these days. Like, I probably would have some advice to tell you if I possibly made $80,000 a year in, instead of motherfucking 65 or 60. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could... Because I would, you know what I'm saying, I would have a little bit more money and I could, you know what I'm saying, make sure Shorty, super, super make sure, I could now, but you know, make sure Shorty got her hair did and anything, you know, I could, you know what I'm saying, but how fucked up society is, women don't even know a good man when they see him for real, for real. Because like, a smart woman knows that she should love the man that loves her, for real. Not the, don't love the man that you love, the man that you love. For real, for real, don't really love you for real, for real, if you fighting like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, if he love you for real, all that shit you've been yakking about and all that, he's already giving that to you. You've been eating him right, you've been feeding him right, you've been doing all of that. So, like, you know what I'm saying? It, it just... You know what I'm saying? Like, it's weird nowadays, bro. I get looked past all the time, like... What? No, it's dumb, bro. Like, bitch, I'm going to, they want I'm going to Spoons and Stables, bitch. That's I five guess. stars. What are you I talking guess. about? You don't go to, you I don't guess. even go to motherfucking Cheesecake Factory. Okay. I, I ain't never that. ate there either, but still, nice to know you don't want to go there. I heard it, it's expensive, but you don't even go there, bitch. You ain't, you ain't never ate nowhere for real, for real. Like, come on, man. It's a video of these bitches talking about it. Any nigga that want to talk to them got to make a hundred k a month. A hundred k? Listen, a motherfucker that wait. Listen, check this out. This is another thing I want to tell my black women. We're 
I was gonna say emotionally. I was gonna say I was gonna say battered, but my OG told me that you can't say battered because it is a woman term to use towards women. They're battered or whatever, right? Like, 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 like. I lost it. Yeah, I can't. I forgot what I was talking about. It happens. Listen. We been we got a good amount anyway. You feel me? No bullshit. No Cut the last shit out. No cap. No cap. <laughs> Yes, you feel me, but it's your boy, Mr. Sitch, you feel me, it's my nigga. Mr. MRG, aka OG Queasy from the mm, East. Bro, you feel me, and this is the first interview that your boy done did, you know what I'm saying? But you know, get up with the kid and we gonna get up with y'all, you feel me? Appreciate y'all for rocking and watching. I watch appreciate it. you. That's Ersky. I love you, boy. Right, I love you too, fuck. <sighs>